to the computer and I'm going to say hello to everyone. And oh yeah, we got we got more people on than I thought. Okay, and we've been just chatting away. That's okay. That's what we do, right? Uh, hey, April. Nice to see you on again. And I see Leslie uh, Burgers on. Yes, hello. Yeah, and I got to know your sister a little bit recently. My sister? Yeah, we had a little chat on uh, Project Broadcast. Uh, <coughs> Barbara Morris. Yes, yes. Uh, she said that she got a, a text from, she said, I got a text from a nice young woman from Young Living. And she said that, um, that you, know, you know, that her, her 12 months was about up, which I have told her for the past three months that it was coming close. And so, well, thank you. I was wondering who sent that to her. I was thinking that it may have been you. Well, it um, because I think she put in a $300 order, didn't she? She did. <laughs> She start, She put it, uh, it was over that. So yeah, I, I will try once again to um, convey to her the, the blessings of essential rewards and see if I can get her to do that. Yeah, yeah. Just tell her that our whole team is as friendly as I am. <laughs> Alrighty. <laughs> okay, well, I'm really excited about being on tonight and about sharing with you guys uh, both of us, me and Bonnie, because Bonnie and Steve were there with Ken and I, and she's going to be uh, presenting some of her slides tonight too, but we're just excited to tell you all the great things that happened to us that we experienced at Nova Vida, the Health Rejuvenation Essential Oil Spa. Um, this is a picture, this is a for real picture of the Nova Vida uh, rejuvenation spa since they rejuvenated the spa. I mean, they completely. Um, Christina, we still have introducing Silverbound on the screen. Oh, stop chair and share again. Okay, thank you. Okay, so I'm going to go back to this. This is where I was. Thank you. Thank you. No, thank you. Okay, so this is the Notavita sign. Uh, this is outside the doors. You're going up the steps to the. Uh, and you can't really see the steps because they're on the far right. Uh, you see, see some steps here, and then they go up even further and then go up into the facility. And this whole facility is ours when we're there. We get all of our treatments in here. We can lay out on the veranda. We can sip our juices. We can, we can do whatever we want in there. And then when we're um, going to our room, we're going to show you some pictures of our cabana or our bungalow. Um, it's just to the right. So you can kind of see one of the new cabanas just to the right. There are eight new cabanas now. And uh, we, just, we just had such a wonderful time. I didn't want to come home. Honestly, I did not want to come home. So there are multiple treatments that you get at the Nova Vida uh, Health Spa. And one of them is neuroauricular therapy, and there's also raindrop. And those treatments are given by this person and others, but this person uh, became very near and dear to my heart. Her name is Eveline, and she is one of the nurse, nurses or therapists there that are so kind and so gentle and so loving. And the neat thing about it is, for example, if you're getting a neuroauricular therapy treatment, um, she will sit at your head and dim the lights and begin to apply the oils on that occipital ridge because a neuroauricular treatment is sandalwood and vetiver and frankincense and cedarwood and Roman chamomile and two more oils that I can't remember off the top of my head that um, are massaged in with a, an auricular probe. And it really helps with, specifically, uh, it was developed for the treatment of Parkinson's. However, they use it for opening up the brain stem, oxygenating the brain, helping with memory issues, memory loss, and just, you know, revitalizing that brain area. So they like to recommend having at least two neuroauriculars a week while you're there. I had my first one and I had told Eveline that I was very sensitive to the oils. So she put one drop each of the oil and lots of carrier 
and I had a very, very relaxing uh, experience. Um, the next therapist, I failed to tell him to only use one drop, and I told him to dilute, but he, I, I could feel that he wasn't diluting as much as Evelyn, and the next day I was all broke out in a rash. So this is what happens to me, and they got that really quickly. Um, there are just so many other things that I could take uh, advantage of that it was really no big deal. And of course, um, Steve and Vani, how was your neuroauricular, Vani? I, I had one or two, I can't even remember. It, it, you know, but it was, it was great. It was, it was really great. I, um, I liked it a lot, but, I, you know, and, uh, you know, a lot of oils and that. So it, w it was nice. And, and of course, had the raindrop a couple of raindrops as well so those were nice too steve had a bunch of raindrops so he, he really liked that and steve and kenneth both got um deep muscle massage and i think they use oils for that do they kenneth oh kenneth is up yes they that. did <laughs> yeah yeah and then they did because i had i had one too and then they do something called a lymphatic massage. Now I had at least two lymphatic massages and I absolutely love them. And they use citrus oils uh, with the lymphatic massage. And I did not have any reaction at all to them. But again, the citrus oils were in a carrier oil. So I was, um, you know, I, I was very receptive to that. And I tended to have some lymph, issues while I was there. I, one, one day I had, um, I thought I had a sinus infection or I had gotten a cold and my sinus on my left side was completely full of fluid and I went to bed and couldn't hardly breathe and was very, very uncomfortable. And 10 hours later, I was completely clear. It was just that lymph moving. You know, when they're doing all these treatments on you and you're in massive detox, because we're doing a lot of steam baths and we're doing a lot of, um, uh, you know, sweating and you're moving everything, you're getting everything to start to come out, um, you're going to have healing releases. And I was releasing or getting that lymph moving and, you know, it just had to come out through my sinuses, I guess. Hmm. Sometimes you get a little worse before you get better, but really none of us had any major, major uh, releases, did we? In fact, I think because of what I had told Vani and Steve, I think the first week they were waiting to feel bad <laughs> to some degree, but it really didn't happen, did it? No, it didn't. Both, you know, we all seemed to do, you know, really well. Yeah, I remember one it day I had, is. I had a slight headache. Go ahead. And I know that you, Vani, you had a headache for a couple of days at oh, first. Oh, yep, I did too. Yeah, yeah. And I think my releases, my releases might have been even that muscle issue I was having, so where my muscles um, got a little screwy, so. That could have been part of something as well. So here's a p picture of Evelyn as well. And I'm going to put everybody on mute. And Vani, I'm going to have you unmute yourself because I'm getting a okay. little bit of. Yeah. Okay, there, that, that got rid of that squeaky. I don't know what that squeaky sound was, but uh, then go ahead and unmute yourself, Vani. Uh, this is another picture of Evelyn, and she's doing a. Um, facial. I had one facial. I wish now that I had had four. I absolutely love it. <laughs> um, the nice thing about it is that they recommend what's best for your skin type and, uh, and your skin texture and your age and all of that. Uh, Hyed was the one who actually did my, um, my facial and she was just as kind and sweet and loving and gentle and knowledgeable as the rest of them. They are just so good at what they do. And so they recommended, she recommended that at night, I put the orchid serum on first and then uh, apply the sandalwood 
moisturizing cream. And I said, well, you know, I've been using the intensive moisturizer. I said, I felt that the sandalwood was a little heavy. And she said, you need the sandalwood. It will help your uh, skin a lot. And then during the day, she recommended that I use the, um, the intensive moisturizer. I really like that moisturizer. It really is nice for my skin. So, you know, this is, this is great because they can, um, they can effectively recommend stuff that's good for just you. So Mary was there at the clinic for the first day because she had been there for the graduation, the 2020 uh, Young Living Academy graduation. And one of the things that she, one of her dreams, one of her goals was that they didn't want to give people just a spa. They wanted to give them a whole new experience. And so she, she, her heart is very close to this spa. She is really um, invested in this spa. And of course, they love coming down to Ecuador because it was where the boys were uh, grew up when they were younger. And um, Joseph was there with her. He is her common traveling uh, companion. And I guess that, that Jacob was there too, but he had been up at the school helping and we didn't see him. But we did see Joseph and he gave us hugs and, and it was nice to be there with them. So when you're not at the Nova Vita Spa, you're enjoying your wonderful bungalow suite. And th these are two bedroom suites. So uh, there's, you go through that main door and there's a bedroom to the left that's locked. It has your own keypad. And then there's a, a bedroom on the right. Our room was on the left and Bonnie and Steve's room was on the right. And this is an actual picture of our bedroom um, with the shades and how you can look out uh, from your, your bed in the morning. We used to just watch the birds and it was really beautiful. And here's another picture. This might be similar to Vani's uh, room looking out over the lake that Gary made. And here's, here's what I call the hookup room. And Vani, what does that mean, the hookup room? <laughs> oh my gosh, every day we got an IV and we were hooked up. And we and were hooked we up. We were hooked up for anywhere from, from a couple of hours to as many as six hours or better. You know, you, you, got, you got to the point where it was like, let me go. We even cheered when the last person got off of their IV on the last day, we all applauded. <laughs> yes, we did. It was so, crazy. So we used to say, oh, you're on the bag? Or, oh, when do you yep. get off the bag? It just, <laughs> it just got to be a saying. And so all the different kinds of IVs, it is just amazing, all the different kinds of IVs. Here's, here's an example of the Nova Vita repolarizing IV. And this particular um, vitamin mineral supplement IV promotes healthy bones, supports the formation of proteins, transports oxygen throughout your body, helps to get rid of particles in the body which can damage our cells. And look at the list of vitamins and minerals that help to boost the immune system and they're used to, be, to treat or prevent deficiency to keep you in good health. Uh, it is in small writing, but I'm just going to go through it very quickly. There's B1, B2, B3, B6, B12, boron, calcium, cobalt, chromium, germanium, lithium, magnesium, manganese, nickel, phosphorus, potassium, sulfur, selenium, silicon, uh, vanadium, van, van, I guess that's how you say it, uh, iodine and zinc. Um, that's just one. We got heliochrysum IVs. We got thieves IVs. We got frankincense IVs. Um, Vani, Steve, and Kenneth got DMSO IVs, which are IVs for specific pain because Kenneth has had a shoulder injury and he fell again at the spa and re-injured that shoulder. And so they were giving him uh, DMSO and Vani was having hip and back pain. They gave her DMSO and Steve was having some foot and um, muscle issues uh, in his feet. 
So I, I didn't get any pain stuff because I wasn't uh, experiencing any pain. But what they did find from our live and blood dry, uh, our live and dried blood analysis was that my body tends to stay in a stressed state. Go figure. I'm a type A personality, and that's my excuse. Um, you know, things like meditation and thinking calmly and using more stress away and peace and calming, I think would help me a lot. But they also uh, encouraged me to uh, take super bees every day and um, just, you know, try to de-stress. So I got the anti-stress um, uh, IVs. They did not. It just depended on what your live and dried blood analysis was showing. Um, can you say anything else about the IVs, Lonnie? Um, no, I just know that it looked rather, it was, it was a lot of fun because you'd see, you'd see everybody on the couches, you know, and they were in various, um, modes of dress because some of us were getting treatment. So we had hospital gowns and bathrobes on, IV poles and IVs hanging around, you know, so we looked more like a nursing home facility than anything else. <laughs> we, we did. We most certainly did. And, and we made joke about it, but, um, but it was a lot of um, time for all of us to sit and, and reflect and talk, talk to others. There was another small group of people that um, came in the second week we were there. So um, the first week we were spoiled rotten. So um, <laughs> it was, yeah, but the IVs, I, I really, really liked um, the um many of the ivs that we had no you know what we slept a lot believe it or not we were sandy said something about energizing and revitalizing um we were up early but we were all a lot of us particularly you know me was in bed early so um it's like oh my god i think i need to go but i think that has to do with detoxing um and that you know we were just you know, we needed that rest, even though you really didn't do much during the day, except walk around with IV poles and get lots of services. You know, um, we, uh, we were tired by the end of the day, so. But you know, was, uh, I was, was trying nice. to, I was trying to decide if I felt any better, you know, when I came home and everything, because I did, I, I thought, you know, I didn't want it to be all in my head. And so yesterday when I was doing my five miles, I just felt compelled to run. And I will tell you, okay, so I'm 66 years old. I ran one third of my five mile walk. That's wow. amazing. That's amazing for me. I don't usually run that much. And I was just doing a, you know, a, a kind of a slow pace, not anything, you know, massive, uh, but I felt so good. I felt so good and I just knew and I think too that I'm still in my sinuses I think I'm still detoxing some and I think we're going to continue to as long as we stay on a really clean diet we're going to talk a little bit about that too um yeah we, yeah, had Leslie, we did we were doing other treatments too Leslie except for when we were doing hot stuff like the saunas or um, the, the Smarty, which was um, an interesting device. And then um, uh, any of the baths and stuff like that, we didn't have IVs in. So that, those had to be worked around the IVs. Now you can get your baths with IVs in. You just keep your arm up, but I think they try to avoid that like you were saying Bonnie because we had baths with our eyes yeah. in when I went to the clinic seven years ago but this is one of the just jacuzzi floral baths and right behind this you can't see it but right behind this um Bonnie has a really great picture of the four of us uh toasting um in the big tub but this is the private tub they had a private tub and then they had a couple's tub so Ken and I, when we first got there, we had the floral bath, and all, all of the floral baths uh, this time were ylang-ylang. And 
everything smelled like ylang ylang. The center smelled like ylang ylang. Outdoors smelled like ylang ylang. And I actually just got my bottle of ylang ylang uh, Tuesday night and set it here because during the day I wanted to remember what it was like. You see, ylang ylang actually um, blooms year round in Ecuador. So they're picking and distilling ylang ylang all year round. And we just planted another, I think, what did they say, 1,700 acres? Yeah, something like that. There's, and they're still planting, so. So we, we're gonna have a lot of ylang ylang, but these are really, you know, relaxing baths and you're in there for about 30 minutes and you're just enjoying the solitude of it all. This is the living room that um, Bonnie was talking about where we hung out and we had our IVs and we even had a karaoke night where Kenneth was singing and uh, the people from Brazil that were there in the second week with us, great, great women, by the way, and Eduardo, who was the guy from Ecuador, um, great people and we just had so much fun we were all singing together and bonnie was singing she has a fabulous voice she won't tell you that but she really does uh and this is where we hang out and every morning osias who was our chef it felt like we had a personal chef right bonnie uh osias would bring a great oh big, yeah great big uh water bottle full of uh sliced cucumbers and celery leaves and limes and whatever he was going to make as far as our water concoction. Sometimes it had basil in it. Sometimes it had, um, I'm trying to think what was really mint, mint in it, just the leaves. He would just stick all the green in there and then pour water over it. And then we would just take it out of the spigot and it would be flavored or infused with those wonderful uh, fresh green vegetables. I really enjoyed that water. And here's Mary again. Nothing looks as good as being health as being healthy feels. Um, she just really believes in the in the spa and what we offer to all of our Young Living people and even people who are not in Young Living. You don't have to be in Young Living to go to the spa. If you have parents who they would love to take a relaxing vacation for a week or two to Ecuador. This is a place to take them. They will be pampered and, and loved on, and it's just so worth it. I mean, even if I wasn't in Young Living, I think I'd want to go here. And there was one guy that was there at the beginning of the second week. He was kind of a businessman, and his wife was there. Kind of. Yeah, he was a businessman, wasn't he? He was a businessman and his wife yeah. was there and they had a small child about eight months old. And then they had their, um, the baby's nurse, nursemaid. I think she was, the, she was breastfeeding the baby actually. And then they had, then he had his parents there and he was doing business the whole time he was there, but he was getting, you know, mud saunas and, uh, massages and I think his wife was getting some facials and some treatments so I mean and I think that they were quite well to do wouldn't you agree Bonnie oh yeah oh yeah yeah so it was just a nice family thing for he all was of them, sure to let us know that too I'm sorry he was sure to let us know that too in oh, did he tell various you that? ways no, it was just the way he was, um, his conversation went and um, he was throwing out money numbers and, you know, stuff like that. So it's oh, like, on the oh, phone. okay. Yeah. yeah, he was doing business on the yeah. phone. So if you want to visit Nova Vida, all you have to do is go to novavida.com. I'm not done. I just wanted to give you this information now. Uh, .com, .ec, that's for Ecuador, and sign in. And then you can provide your basic information, create a password and click save. And you can go through and look at all of the different packages that they have. Now, Vani and Steve and Kenneth and I all took advantage of what we call the detox plan. And the detox plan is the most expensive plan. 
We did that for the first week and that was about $3,700 per person to give you an idea. Plus so the, 12 percent tax. Yeah, see now they didn't tell us about the tax until we had to pay the bills. So the tax is another seven or eight hundred dollars tacked on to that. And that also, that also didn't include the bungalow. The bungalow was about seven hundred and what was it? It was hundred and thirteen dollars a night. hundred and thirteen dollars a night and for seven nights it was seven hundred and seventy one dollars I think is what it came to. Um, so that's in addition and then your flight. But I'm telling you that it may sound a little pricey but it is well well worth it. You will get your money's worth. I am not I'm not exaggerating when I say that you will get your money's worth. So here again are some pictures of the outside of the spa. This is some of the food that we had. This is the tree house. This is somebody taking pictures. This is Joseph or Jacob at the zip line from the tree house going down to the house. You get to see all of this stuff. Here's the tree house. This is still a Go back one slide, Christina. Yeah, the distillery the is The distillery behind. is up in the back, yeah. Mm -hmm. You can see the distillery up behind, and I think uh, Vani has some better pictures of that. So, um, so here's the tree house. Uh, that's pretty cool, and Vani has some really nice pictures of that. Here is a picture of the Ylang-Ylang cookers. Now, these are very different from the big cookers that we normally cook say our Ruda or our Okatea or our Palo uh, Santo is actually done in a different cooker as well. Um, our, our Idaho balsam fir, our lavender, our peppermint, our juniper, all of those are done in the big uh, round cookers with the goose sticks. These are much smaller. You can see, oh, this is somebody's leg. So if he were to stand next to this, he's only gonna be about as tall as this cooker. Whereas those other cookers are 12 to 16 feet deep. 12 to 16 feet deep. This is probably only six feet deep. And it's because the petals are more delicate and they have to do a more delicate process and much less um, plant material at a time. So this is the Ylang Ylang distillery, which is down in the basement of the big, uh, the big cooker portion of the distillery. Here's a picture of the terrain that we got to look at every single day. These trees are called sabo trees and it is the tree that the, um, that the uh, tree house is wrapped around and the tree house tree is still alive. Uh, but this is just beautiful. This is the farm. You'll see all these new plantings. These are all new ylang ylang trees that have been planted down here in rows and acres and acres. Uh, we stopped at the goat farm, of course, on our, uh, the first days there, they had 40 new baby Nubian goats. And uh, we were, Gavani and I were just in our element because we love, we love these little babies and they're so cute. And uh, they milk them and then they, of course, the moms are feeding their babies right now, but um, they sell the milk uh, to the community. They used to, they used to actually use the goat milk from this farm for some of our products. And then uh, they ended up with some exporting uh, issues, law issues. So none of the milk that is produced on this farm actually gets into the United States. It's for the local people and the baby goats and whoever else wants to drink goat's milk. <clears throat> okay, let's talk a little bit about the live and dried blood analysis because I know that this is new to a lot of you. Um, I got live and dried blood analysis both in 2003 and then in 2013 and then again in 2020. And so what they do is they will prick your finger and they will take a drop of blood 
and they will put it on a slide and they will cover that slide. That is your live blood analysis. It looks very different than this slide. The live blood analysis is gonna show your blood moving. It actually, uh, it, 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 and my, my blood after two weeks was moving like crazy. Uh, the first time that we had it taken when we first got there about three days into our treatments, my blood wasn't moving that much. It was pretty sticky. We'd found that the red blood cells were sticking together. This is indicative of um, sugar. This is indicative of high triglycerides. Uh, this is showing that you're, uh, you're not oxygenating your red blood cells as much as you could be or should be. Um, for those of you who are a local here, Dana Christensen it, out of Perryville, Missouri does live and dried blood analysis. It's very, very interesting. Um, so they can tell by that live blood if you have parasites in your blood. And it's funny because both Vonnie and I had a tiny, I, at least I had one. And I think it was the same for you, wasn't it? One tiny parasite. Yeah, just, just one. Yeah, and so they weren't really too concerned um, because they knew that through the IVs of the oil IVs, especially like the thieves uh, and anything else that we were doing, uh, that would probably, because we weren't infested or, you know, in, inundated with parasites, they weren't too worried about it. So then when we had our blood taken a second time, uh, they saw no parasites in my blood. But I think they did find two in yours, didn't they? Yeah, they were different ones in mine. They were a, a, like a flat one that, that showed up. And they think that had to do with, because I've had so many problems with my digestion, that um, and I was doing so great while we were there that it it just loosened that and those guys showed up. So so did they recommend anything pretty, for that? Um, they put me on parafree. That's right. So she's on parafree and she's on a regiment of parafree. Okay, so then they take from that little uh, finger prick. They take five tiny drops and they put it on a slide and they set that aside and they let that dry. And once that's dry, this is what you see on that slide. You'll see, if you can see where my cursor is, in between these red corpuscle-like uh, looking things, you'll see little bluish lakes. Now, there's, these aren't very big. This is actually pretty healthy. Um, the bigger these are, the more acid is in your blood. And I think all of us had some, you know, appreciable acid. Uh, a lot of, all of us had uh, poor fiber networks between our blood corpuscles um, in the beginning, uh, you know, to one degree or another. We weren't all, you know, really bad or anything. It was just that it wasn't, it wasn't the healthiest blood that they had seen. And, and so that gives them a baseline and then they can say, okay, these are the things that you have to do or can do or choose to do to get your blood in order. Um, some other things that you can see in here on the outside of the blood drop, you're going to see if there's a vitamin C deficiency, you're going to see a spray. And all of us had that spray and it went out quite far on most, on, on all of our blood, um, our blood slides. However, by the second week, I know I had no spray at all. So we had gotten enough vitamin C from both the IVs that they had given us and all of the wonderful, luscious, fresh fruit that they had given us too, which really got me to thinking that Kenneth and I needed to eat much more fruit. And the, the problem is, is I got, got home and I got all excited about, you know, getting fruit. And I went to Fresh Time, which is our organic store here. And I got a papaya, a nice, beautiful, perfectly ripe papaya. I think we got some background. Again, let me. Let's mute. Okay, I think I think we're good. I think everybody else is muted. Um, yeah. I got some papaya, I got some uh, Mexico ma mangoes that we're supposed to they would call honey mangoes. They're yellow, they're very uh, familiar to me because we used to get those kind of mangoes in, um, in the Philippines. 
And then I got some blackberries that were on sale for $1.99 a carton. And I was really excited about, you know, making a fruit salad for Ken and I in the morning. I got some dragon fruit, which we had lots of dragon fruit down in um, Ecuador. They called it um, Pita Haya. Remember, Lonnie? It was Pita Haya. Yep. Um, but, but it is dragon fruit. And so I brought all this fruit home and I uh, proceeded to, to, you know, peel the papaya and slice it and seed it. And I took a little chunk of it and it was horrible. It had hardly any flavor at all. And I was really disappointed. So I cubed it up and I put it in a bowl and I thought, well, maybe the mangoes will sweeten it up a little bit. So I peeled the mangoes and I sliced the mango and I took a little hunk of it and they were so sour, I could hardly, you know, like, oh, it was just so sour. And then I thought, well, let me see what the blackberries are like. The blackberries were hard as a rock and they were so sour. And I was just so disappointed. And I said, you know what? We're gonna be using this for the next couple of days in our smoothie and I'm gonna add stevia to it and we'll never know the difference and we'll still get our fiber. And if there are any vitamins and minerals in this uh, green picked fruit that's been trying to ripen on its own, well, you know, that's just a bonus, right? And then I told Kenneth, I said, you know what, we're gonna buy organic frozen fruit because it's, most of it is picked when it's ripe so that it's at its height of sweetness and nutrient value and it's usually flash frozen so uh we're gonna go back to the frozen fruit for our smoothies uh but anyway so so it showed that our vitamin c had uh made an appreciable change by the end of two weeks uh did you want to say anything else vani about the live and dried blood analysis that you can think of off the top of your head no um, no not here no uh, i'm good okay this is the Smarty, and what this is, is it's a very high heat chamber. It's infrared. It go, this slides up to your neck. So your body is in this very high heat of about 140 degrees, and uh, it's targeting uh, the gut and deep muscle tissue, and you are sweating to beat the band. I'm telling you, we had hospital gowns on and I could literally wring out my hospital gown when we got out of this. Uh, I call it my little uh, time in hell because it was so hot, but I actually felt good. I mean, it was, it was a great um, treatment. I really did like it. It was just really, really hot, wasn't it, Ronnie? Yep. Yeah. Here's another picture. One of, one of the, sorry. That's okay. One of the treatments they did was they um, coated us with oil that had tea leaves in it, some kind of tea leaves or whatever, and then they wrapped you up in got in 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 bandages kind of things, and then they made you get in this thing. Now, yeah, you can't be real modest in a lot of these situations, so you were wrapped up, you know all the way up to your hoo-hoo and then all the way up to your hoo-hoos and <laughs> um, and and you just you know it was a girl doing it so we were okay the boys had a little bit of a an issue sometimes but um but it, it it made it rather fun by the end of the time we left we go well seen your butt seen your butt so we're we're good to go <laughs> so we um you know, you got to take it with a lot of humor and, and know that you're in there for, for a lot of good things. But um, this thing was really interesting because um, we each did one with, a, you know, different wraps. And then we did, um, we did another one where they just oiled us up and threw us in there. So what did Kenneth call it? He'd been based, baked, rotisseried, and something else. He's been, he had been. <laughs> oh, and boy. He had been poked with the IVs every day. He had been baked in the Smarty and he had been boiled in the, you know, the steam baths and the, the floral water was not that hot, but he felt like he had been through the ringer. Although I will tell you that he wants to go back. And anytime I hear him talking on the phone about it to somebody, he is just 
absolutely ecstatic about the experience that he had. So this is, uh, we did have lunch out here um, a couple of times in the first week when we didn't have so many people there, which was really nice. We also, at the end, we had a mariachi band and, and a big party that uh, Vani's gonna show us a picture of. So I think that's the end of my slides. Now I'm gonna go to your slides, Vani. What's interesting is that last picture Christina showed you, that's got to be um, a couple of years ago or something like that because it is so green and so lush now that, and the ylang ylang trees are so big um, out that view and the sabo trees are huge. So, so can you see this? Uh, your so slide? you can see. Can you see your slide? Hmm. Can you see your yes, slide? Yes, ma'am. Okay. Yes. So, so Mary was there when we were um, when we were there. So that was nice to see her. This is another view of the um, bungalows, so that you know that you've got a double bed you can um, lay in, and then um, some bunk beds and the bathroom. There's a nice shower with a big rain shower over your head. So bring a bath, bring a a uh, shower cap so that you don't have to get your head wet every single day you know although we were wet anyway for most of it so this uh one little thatched roof building is where they feed all the workers they serve 160 meals a day during the week um out of this thing for all the workers that come in and the lake behind that is the one that gary dug out um uh several years ago when um, he did it, there really wasn't any water on the property. We heard some really great stories about them looking for water and Gary, you know, dug holes after holes after holes and um, finally threw the shovel down and said, well, there's just no water here. And all of a sudden somebody hollers up and says, hey, come look. And there was a fish in the hole that had come up in the hole and there was a fish there. So. Um, this is, uh, that lake is on the back side behind us, um, and that, and then they have this one, and it, um, it's a beautiful lake, ducks and um, geese and um, um, cranes and all kinds of birds, so, that are on there, and this was a sunset, this is all of us out looking at a sunset, when the sun went down that first week, it went down very quickly and it was just beautiful we were all out there watching it yeah we're just south of the equator so when the sun goes down mm -hmm. at 6 23 it goes down in seconds there's no slow sunset we're right on the equator so here we can see christine and all of us in the hot tubs and they bring you they bring you your drinks, you know, they bring you juices to, to, to drink on. And then of course, Steve and I had a mud, a mud uh, uh, sauna or a, a steam room. So we're all covered in mud that is, uh, uh, got lots of ylang ylang in it and all that kind of stuff. And you sit in the steam room and all of that gets on your, you know, you, you sit with it on your skin for about um, 20 minutes, 30 minutes. So, so that was really nice. And then they had the foot detox machines and then the infar saunas. And this is actually um, one of our live, live and dried blood analysis. As you can see, this blood is, um, there's a lot of little loose ones and that kind of stuff, but you can see where, where they're all sticking together. And by the way, I'm pointing to the screen. Can you see me pointing to the screen? <laughs> No. And and then um and then you can see that spray, see that spray on the dried um bit and then the network and then we talked about the acid lakes. So um so this was one of them. Uh, I think it was a these are befores. One's a before and one's an after. So but you know, lots of lots of different therapies that we could we could do and um, just, I mean, we even had drink, they even brought us juices while we were sitting 
not for this one because I didn't want to drink the mud, but um, but when we're sitting in, in the um, any of the saunas or anything like that, we always had something that we could drink. And some of the things that they would give us to drink is a cold glass of water with mineral essence in it or uh, a green uh, drink or a watermelon juice or I think one time we had like a lemonade, uh, just different kinds of juices, passion fruit, um, just different kinds of fresh uh, juice juices. This, this is that big um, uh, building that you saw behind Nova Vida. Um, this is where they lay all the materials out for drying and that that's Ruta that's laying there. Um, okay. And that was, because we, when we first got there, they had Okatea um, out, and boy, did it smell really nice. And then these are the big cookers at the bottom of the picture, all right? And, and the small cookers, Nicholas is the farm manager. He's standing next to that, the, the um, Ylang Ylang cookers, and they're back behind and downstairs behind these um, bigger cookers, so... Um, lots of stuff going on over there. These are some of the meals that we had. I mean, look at this food. We were just spoiled. The, the stuff on the right, I mean, on the left, on the, I don't know which is right and which is left, but, um, the, the fruit over here and the rice and all of that, the chef made for us. The food on the other side of the screen was made by families we went to. Christina had a young man that she sponsored and her his family made the meal that's on the bottom. Um, plantains and chicken and, and all that and then the fruit at the top which was really really cool. You have your own little handle there but you peel that open and it's full of of the seeds that you eat and um, it was really tasty and that we went over to Lisseth's house and we have some pictures of her family and that but I mean this is the food that we got every day so it was delicious it was delicious okay the, these are pictures of the Young Living Academy that uh, Vani and Steve got to see for the very first time it's beautiful the old one is up here in the upper corner that was the old building at a dirt floor, no windows. Um, I think there were 30 kids, they said, that were in this with one teacher. And um, this is what inspired Gary to build uh, this academy. And they, um, you can see the, this picture down here in the middle is um, the expansion that they had done so that they have K through 12. And then the little kids in this bottom picture go to in these little other little buildings but they really cater they've got a soccer field a baseball field you know um all kinds of things that are on the property and um it, it was just fabulous it was absolutely fabulous to see what these kids were getting so here's the tree house and you can see the the branch is coming right through the roof. You can see Steve, that's my husband, he's five foot three. You can see how the base of that tree in comparison to him, it's just a huge tree. And the, the tree grows right through the, the building and that, and then you see Mary's and the boys where they stay. Um, there's a gym, a swimming pool, an apartment and all that that's, that's over there. So. It's really a uh, really a nice place. Uh huh. Oops, sorry, sorry. So you can use yeah the the gym and the pool is open for any of the clients to utilize if they choose to. This is the tree growing up inside. The mm hmm. It's amazing. Here's some of the plants. So Lang Lang the Lang Lang is actually a tree that gets to be 20 30 feet high but of course they can't pick um that the flowers if they're up on ladders and stuff so what they do is they cut the top of the tree and they keep it trimmed and they pull the branches down so that it becomes more like a bush and they're able to pick these flowers um 
and they pick about 20 bushels per person per day. Um, so they're, you know, they're really, I think they had one lady that picked 50 bushels one time, um, which is quite a feat in itself. And then they grow cacao um, on, on the farm. And these are two picture, two old pictures of older pictures of Gary and Mary. Mary sitting in um, a Palo Santos tree, and um, but you can see how lush the the um, the ylang ylang is. So I mean, it, it's and the wind blows and you get it wafts the um, ylang ylang. So. Nobody getting mad around there. There's our goats. These are some animals that we, you know, had. These are all brand new babies. These guys don't even have hair on their skin yet. They're so brand new. You can even see the umbilical cord on this little guy. So, um, but we had all kinds of birds and they've got a couple pigs and that snail is as big as my hand. And, um, uh, we had canaries that were flying all over around the uh, the complex, and they would, you know, get going. And then um, this green box over here is um, the worm casting. It was really, really interesting how they layer the compost, and they use these worms. There were three guys sitting at a table going through the compost, pulling pulling worms out of out of it, you know. Um, to save the worms so they could use them again. And this this compost right here is as fine as sugar, as powdered sugar, and they have to actually mix it with some dirt when they go to use it um, to, to make all the plant startings and stuff like that. It was really fascinating, um, the amount. And there were, there were at least four, four of these things, and they were, 40 feet long, these bins. Is that yeah, right, Christine? At least there four, there least might have been six. Four of them. Well, what's, what's interesting is yeah. that local farmers, farmers that aren't, you know, affiliated with Young Living, have actually inquired uh, about how to start these uh, worm farms uh, for their own farms because the plants thrive so much better with these worm castings. It's, it's the best fertilizer you can put on your, on your plants. So they're actually teaching local farmers how to uh, start their own worm farms and you know, have healthy crops as well. <clears throat> this is um, Karen, Karen Malone. She was, um, she was there. She's been a diamond with Young Living for quite a while. A and um, a she was there helping. Oh, platinum. I'm sorry. I thought she made diamond. Anyway, um, oh. she was helping the doctor because we had a new doctor. And the two ladies are um, ladies that came in from uh, Brazil and that. And actually, I think the one is from California, isn't she? Actually? Yeah, Selma is on the um, right. And she's actually going to yeah. help me uh, in she's Chicago with my Hispanic group up there because she speaks very fluent Spanish, but she speaks very good English. And this was an orthopedic surgeon that had come to get some treatments from the spa. And he was teaching us uh, about I inserts and how to fix your back naturally. And um, so we're learning some things right here. And then Karen was doing some demonstrations on how to treat a headache. Uh, and this woman, um, her name was Clarissa, and she was from Sao Paulo, Brazil, and spoke Portuguese, but could also speak Spanish and some English. So we just had such a great time with training. You get training there as well, especially if Karen's there. You'll get training. And we went on some day trips. Um, into um, Guayaquil and this was um, an historic area that we went to and this was a very famous hotel that was there and we were in their garden area and um, all these lilies um, and that on orchid I mean it was just gorgeous and of course we went to the Young Living um, store which is in the largest mall um, they have 
in Ecuador and we're, we're just eating it up right here. We're just having a good time. So Guayaquil, Ecuador is the that, largest I think that, city in Ecuador. Go ahead. Guayaquil, Ecuador is the largest city in Ecuador. Quito is the capital, but Guayaquil is where we fly into. And Guayaquil, that city, is 45 minutes from the farm. 45 minutes from the farm. Yeah. yeah. So and this is some of the, the things that went on. You can see that, um, you know, they use a lot of bars on their windows, but they make it artwork so it's kind of cool and then this is how they live with the stacked up houses and and things like that and you can't drive up there all you can do is walk up you know and then they get around they get around in all kinds of ways but that little red vehicle right there in that middle picture is actually a type of motorcycle almost and um they they drive them all over with lots of people in them but we saw motorcycles with mom dad baby chainsaws um <laughs> you name it they were getting around with it it was it was it was nuts so but they live like this but they're happy as larks their average income is three hundred dollars a month you guys three hundred dollars a month so this is Lisseth. Lisseth is was one of the um, administrators at the front desk. But the couple, she's down here in the bottom corner with her father and her mother. And these are the first people that Gary brought to his farm. He's been with Gary for um, the whole time the farm's been up. Um, there's quite a story um about them and how they got to ecuador and it's very touching and that and they actually when they built the bungalows um this past year they built four homes for some of the farm staff and he's in one of them um and it's a three bedroom home with a living room and a kitchen and a dining area and air and they're they're beautiful and they're not used to this kind of thing i mean the walls were finished we went to the home of the people with the young man up here in the upper corner we went to their home and if you look just above the edge of him you can see the walls aren't even finished in this house but they're quite content you know they do a little bit at a time and um, so it's really nice. The center picture is Hyed. She's the one that did our facials. And then um, Denise is in, she's the one I conversed with um, most of the time as we were setting this up. And um, she does the front desk. And then um, the guy's name, Christine, I, it keeps escaping me. Eduardo, Eduardo right? Eduardo, and this is Judy. Yep. And then and Judy. Austin, Austin, Texas. And Eduardo and is then, actually from Ecuador. Then we have Angel. And he is Yeah. In then we have room. Angel in the bottom and Angel Angel was an angel. He just took care of everything. If we needed something, he took care of it. So and then you have in this other picture you have Eveline, you have Nita, Maria, Nita, and then Steve's in this one, and then Hyed. And then the next two are they're actually married. Um, it's Raquel and she's the nurse and Mongo is one of the therapists. So, and Magno. Nina Maria, she's a, um, huh? Magno. Magno. Yeah. Yeah. And Nita was a nurse too. So just yeah. really, yeah, really Raquel nice Raquel is actually people. the head nurse and she's been right. there since I was there the very first time in 2013. She's been there about about 10 years. And then we had, then we had a mariachi band on our, on our last Friday. Apparently he's pretty famous in the area and they brought him in and we were doing salsa dancing. We were everything. Oh my goodness. It was so much fun. So much fun. So, and then um, these, all these people came to the airport with us um, to send us off. 
And the, the young man behind Kenneth is the one that Kenneth and Christina sponsored. Um, the young girl that's kneeling down and the girl right in the, in the corner of the picture, they're sisters. And um, they've taken really good care of us. And then Gilseline, she is a nurse and um, she just, she, she became my favorite little pal in that. And then laying in the bed, the view from the bed out our window. Okay, so I wanna talk a little bit about, uh, I'll just leave that there, a little bit about some of the supplementation that was recommended to us. Onto the lake, I mean, that's the, right. wake up every rain or something like that. And how, boy, howdy, when it rains, you what? What was that? I think I think you cut out, Bonnie. Oh, okay. You sound like you're cutting so out. So this is this was the uh, my connection's probably bad, as we know. Okay, so what I'd like to talk about now. I'm finished. Know, is uh, some of the supplement suggestions that they had made for Ken and I um, based on our live and dried blood analysis and from our labs. So, um, uh, so anyway, bottom line was um, Kenneth's uh, lab showed that he was diabetic and also that he had a fat fatty liver. So, they uh, gave us a great protocol to help him with that. I'm gonna tell you about the oils that he takes every day. He takes four drops either in a capsule or in Ningxia Red of all of these oils. Cinnamon, lemongrass, dill, fennel, clove, heliochrysum, goldenrod, and rosemary. Now what I do with those oils is I put them in a one ounce dropper bottle. So it's half the size of this. Uh, it's just a small dropper bottle and I put 10 drops of each. So it fills up the whole ounce. So it's got cinnamon, lemongrass, dill, fennel, clove, helichrysum, goldenrod, and rosemary. And then he's able to take and put four dropper drops, not dropper folds, or drops of these oils in his Ningxia Red in the morning, and he really likes the flavor. You can tell if it's got, um, you know, clove and fennel and uh, cinnamon in it, it's gonna taste good. Um, so he likes that. He also takes four drops four times a day. So what I do is I take, a cap I take four capsules and I make them at night, and they hold up the whole next day. And they go into our little, our little cups for all our supplements. So he takes four drops of black pepper, four drops of nutmeg, and four drops of ginger in a capsule four times a day. And then he takes and rubs four drops of the following oils over his stomach and pancreas every day. That's dill and fennel and thieves. So you know that dill and fennel and coriander and okatea are all good for blood sugar management. And if we run out of dill, I have okatea, and I'm using that right now for him because I didn't realize that I only had six drops of dill when I came back from Ecuador. However, four bottles came in today uh, that I ordered um, when I got my ER on the first. So. Um, also, if I were to run out of Okatea, because you know that's not easy to get a hold of, I'm going to opt out for the coriander. Another thing that he does is he, it, is he rolls on, he has a roller ball of Valor and a roller ball of Rutavala, and then he uses aromaces and he uses it on his forehead, his temples, the back of the neck, and under the ring finger. This is all good for cholesterol, um, balancing um, cholesterol and heart. Uh, so that's the heart Vitaflex 
point is under the ring finger and he does that every day. Christina? Yes. Would you repeat that that last one again? I got the valor, he uses valor, rutavala, and then I, I was not scribbling fast enough. Aromases. Uh, okay, and um, how is he using the aromases again? Two drops on his forehead, his temple, back of the neck, and under the ring finger. And this is the recommendations that they give you. They actually give you a printout after your treatments, before you get to go home, and then you can make your order and get your oils and supplements, and then you start taking them. So he is taking two, cap full, two caps of Juvitone for his liver uh, at breakfast every day. He's putting Juvaflex over the liver every morning and every night. He's taking three caps of Life 9 at night. He's taking one tablespoon of Juva Power for breakfast and at bedtime. He's taking Essential Zyme 4s. Those are two capsules, right? Breakfast, lunch, and dinner. He's taking two capsules of detox zyme at 7 a.m. before lunch and mid-afternoon. He's doing two ounces of Ningxia Red at 7 a.m. before lunch and mid-afternoon. So that's six ounces of Ningxia Red a day. He's taking Super Cal as directed. One cap, one uh, tablet of Super B at breakfast and one at lunch. Two capsules of Sulfurzyme, breakfast, lunch, and dinner. Multigreens, two caps, breakfast, lunch, and dinner. And I've always preached that I take six a day. And here it just bears out that all of us should be on six a day. Breakfast, lunch, and dinner. Omega Gize, three Omega Gize, breakfast, lunch, and dinner. That's nine Omega Gize a day. And they recommend that everyone should be taking between nine and 12 Omega Gize a day. We don't take enough supplements. Um, Agilis as directed. Now I didn't have any Agilis when I got home, so I've been giving him BLM as directed. And as soon as that's over, uh, I'll order some Agilis at the beginning of next month. Prostate health, he's taking as directed. Endogize, he's taking two caps for breakfast. Master formula, both of us are taking a packet a day. And he is recommended to take one meal of Balance Complete. Now my Balance Complete just came in, but I've been feeding him um, pure protein and sleep. I love the sleep. Okay, so that was Kenneth's supplements. Now, now I'm gonna give you mine. One cap of Juvitone at lunch. Two caps of Life 9 at bedtime. One tablespoon of Juva Power at bedtime. Two caps of Essential Zyme for breakfast, lunch, and dinner. Everybody should be doing Essential Zyme 4 during breakfast, lunch, and dinner. 10 caps of detox zyme before bed. That's a lot. You saw that Kenneth was taking two between his meals. I think he was taking two at 7 a.m., two um, mid-morning and two mid-afternoon. I'm taking two comfort tone breakfast and lunch. Now, 
<laughs> I wondered why. <laughs> because I don't have any bowel issues. You guys have heard me say it a hundred times. My bowels run like a finely tuned race car, right? So why are they giving me Comfortone? And why am I going to the bathroom three, four, five times a day? I believe after I sat and thought about it for a bit, you know, there was a lot of heavy metals in my uh, ionic foot bath. And oh, by the way, for those of you who are local, I now have a Nova Vita Spa Ionic Foot Bath. And I, so does Vani. And Vani, I had to order, um, did you get yours? Yes, I did. I ordered two dish pans from Amazon and they came today. So you. Oh, okay. Yeah, I was at my. Yeah. Yeah. And then if we need new arrays, I think they run about $20 a piece. Right. From Amazon. Because I did not find on yesusa.com.org or whatever it was.com. I didn't see where you could get replacement plates. Yeah. So anyway, for those who are local, if you are wanting to set up an appointment to get an ionic foot bath, my foot bath has a TENS unit that attaches to it and infrared belly belts so that you can get your stomach uh, nice and infrared while you're getting your foot bath. I know Loretta was on here earlier. She may still be on here. Loretta offers a, an Ionic foot spa as well, foot bath as well. So you can also get them from Loretta. And, uh, and remember, Loretta does raindrops. Um, one of the things that I learned that I wanted to share with everyone, and actually I called one of my uh, distributors this week because I had learned this, and, and I think she's on tonight. Um, if you know anyone who has lines, they should be getting a raindrop a week. They will not even start getting responses until six to eight weeks in, and then it will actually kill the line. Um, people should start getting raindrops now that we're, uh, you know, looking at the coronavirus being uh, in our country. Raindrops are going to help to boost the immune system and kill any live bacteria that if you were to have a live blood analysis, you would see the bacteria in your blood. You would see the candida in your blood. Um, you can actually see it in between the red blood cells. If you have a large amount of candida or a large amount of bacteria, you're gonna see these things. Uh, we didn't have much bacteria or viruses, but remember, we take a lot of supplements. So, um, so, just to re re recap here on the comfort tone, I really believe because the ionic foot bath brought out a lot of heavy metals, that it has a lot to do with my Gulf War and that I'm still detoxing from all of that. And, and um, I think that the comfort tone just helps to pull that stuff out because it has the bentonite clay in it and it helps to encourage really healthy peristaltic movement i think i have that but i think that i'm just going to continue to detox for a while and i think i'm going to continue this regimen for at least um probably and at least until we go to uh the far east and then i'm going to take some supplements maybe not all of these because Really, it is, it is an effort to stick to all of this uh, protocol and then come back and then do it again and then go to convention. I'll probably take some with me again, but not the, uh, the, the, I think it's just good to do it at home and then come back and do it again, stick to it, you know, pretty, pretty good. But I also take one packet of alkaline, uh, one at breakfast and one at bedtime. I also take one cap of Super B at breakfast. I take sulfurzyme as needed because I'm really not um, 
in any pain anymore, which is really quite amazing. Um, I'm taking two multigreens, breakfast, lunch, and dinner. One cap of inner defense before a lunch. Progestins plus as needed. Mineral essence, I'm taking five half droppers at breakfast and five half droppers at lunch. That's twice a day. That's the most mineral essence I've ever taken. But I find that uh, my body really needs the extra minerals. I'm taking two caps of Cardiogize at lunch, one pack of the Master Formula, and both of us are taking one scoop of Amino Wise daily. Now, I need to talk to you about this Amino Wise because I learned something new that everybody needs to know about. Okay, so the majority of problems that they're seeing in the blood is digestion. And if you don't have good digestion, you don't have good immunity. We know that. And, and the good news is, is that next week, my class is going to be on digestion again. So we're going to talk about it. And I want you to come with any questions. I really want to dig deep and dive deep into helping us to understand uh, better how we can have a healthier digestion. So one of the things that we found is that people are just not digesting protein. And there's a couple of reasons why. Number one, they're mixing their proteins with starch, and that is not good food combining. It, we, we have been brainwashed into believing, into thinking that meat and potatoes is the standard diet of America. And it has become the standard diet of America, but the, but the, misnomer, the misnomer, the fable, is that this is a good pairing, and it is not. Because once you put that starch in, you're not digesting that protein. So what do you eat with your meat then? You eat vegetables. If you want that wonderful potato, because that's my biggest weakness, give me my potatoes. Eat your potatoes with vegetables. I have a great one dish Italian meal that I have when my green beans first come on. And I get some red new potatoes and those green beans out of my garden and fresh ripe tomatoes. I steam my potatoes until they're, you know, the way they're supposed to be, fork, fork tender. I lightly steam my green beans. I stack my potatoes on the plate, my green beans on the plate, and I slice fresh tomatoes in quarters, you know, quarters or sixths or eighths, depending on how big the tomato is, obviously. I put that on top. I drizzle it with olive oil, with Himalayan sea salt, and Italian herb seasoning, just, you know, oregano, thyme, um, you know, the Italian herb blend. And I eat that. And I'm going to tell you right now that it is delicious. These are how, we, this is how we eat our potatoes. We, you should choose to eat your potatoes with vegetables. And I was just re-minded, um, reminded of this. Do not eat meat with starch. If you're going to eat fruit, eat it with, eat it alone. It's really best to eat it alone, especially melons. Melons don't food combine with anything. So having melon juice or having a melon uh, compote or whatever between, you know, as a snack is a great choice, especially uh, once melons start coming into season now. They're coming up from Mexico right now. Um, probably not as flavorful as they will be, but, um, but you know, just food for thought. Okay, so the second thing, that was number one. Number one is we're not digesting proteins because of our food, poor food combinations. Number two, we need amino acids in order to cause the, um, the uh, it's not synapse, but it's the uh, synapse, no, it's not synapse. Uh, well, to kick in, if you will, to kick in the production of enzymes to do what they need to do. We, you can eat enzymes, but if you're not taking amino-wise, you're not firing those enzymes up the way they need to be fired up. So we need to be taking amino-wise to get our amino acids. And I'm going to recommend, highly recommend, that you get amino-wise, if you don't have it already, and start taking one a day. 
And I like to put it in this shaker bottle because I can take a little funnel, I can put my one scoop in, I can fill up my water to about here, and I can put my cap on and I can shake it up really good and then I can drink it. And um, I like to do it after I work out because it just seems to electrify every, everything in my body. I know that I'm hydrating and I know that I'm hydrating with amino acids that my body needs desperately. So I'm gonna really, really encourage you guys to start doing one scoop of amino acids. And we learned this at the clinic every day to help utilize the enzymes. You should be taking essential enzyme for breakfast, lunch, and dinner. This is not for sick people. This is for people who want to stay healthy, who want to lose weight, who want to get their metabolism jump started. We need to get that metabolism. And, and I'm telling you, your pain will go away. How are you feeling, Vani? Oh, I feel, I feel great. So we were, we've been out in the yard playing already and, and doing stuff out there. The only thing is, is um, I still want my nap. Like we, <laughs> I still want my nap. <laughs> yes, so. catalyst is the word. It's the catalyst. Cookie, thank you. And I'm so glad to see you on this call tonight. Yippee. Um, yeah, so... So these are the things that, you know, we need to start thinking about. If you think you have a compromised liver, let's be supporting that liver with this good juva, juva tone and juva power. Um, I actually started putting Kenneth's juva power in his smoothie in the morning because it was just like, okay, we got this glass of juva power we've got to drink. I've got this glass of alkaline to drink. I've got this glass of mineral essence to drink. It just got, whoa, let's just put it on a smoothie. It makes it really easy. Plus that fruit that doesn't have a lot of flavor goes in there with a little stevie and we're good to go. But um, since I've been home, I've lost three pounds. Uh, so I was real happy about that. And I think that as our metabolism continues, you lost four, Bonnie? Yep, yep. Four pounds since you've been home. And we've only been home since Monday. And I'll tell you that the flying was real stressful, but we got home and you know, now that we're, our, uh, we're on our regime, our supplements are beginning to um, kick in our metabolism. And I can tell a big difference. I'm, I'm eating uh, a little bit more often throughout the day. I'm eating smaller portions, but I'm eating extremely healthy. There's nothing, you know, oh, they've recommended no red meat. And now the only red meat that Ken and I eat are bison, elk, um, venison and lamb, uh, we might have a steak twice a year, you know, uh, and we do have, well, yeah, that's the red meat. That's all the red meat that we eat. And they have asked us to not have any red meat. So we're not doing lamb or venison or any of that for at least a month, they said. And then if we do start incorporating it in, you know, once or twice a month, three to four times a month max, uh, max, that's once a week. That's probably too much. So chicken and fish and more um, protein uh, plant foods. Um, think about eggs. Think about legumes and beans. Think about more fresh, lightly steamed vegetables. Think about more salads with delicious salad dressings like Leslie can make. Uh, think about um, fruit dish, fruit, fruit bowls and smoothies. These are the foods that we should be putting in our mouths. And it's just so nice to be able to get recalibrated like we did at, um, at, the, at the Nova Vita Spa and, and to be able to bring this information back to you. Do you have any questions? I know we've gone over, but I wanted to take extra time so that we could just kind of give you the whole shebang. Any questions? Any specific questions? I have a couple things. <laughs> oh, great. Um, I don't know uh, how many of y'all are Doug uh, Corrigan, I believe is his name, but he does, uh, um, he offers some good education on young living things as well as nutrition and all in general. And 
one of the he's doing a series on vitamins and minerals right now and one thing that i would suggest to add to the amino wise which you are already doing christina is that the super b um complete b complex because in order for any of the enzyme activity to actually work in your body it takes b vitamins in order for that to happen and certain b vitamins need other b vitamins in order for them to work so you really need that complex and the super b um, complex is excellent he says he really um, uh, recommended that one a lot um, i'm just curious so they were recommending for you to have more um, uh, vegetables and fruits, which I certainly understand. What was their feeling on grains? The only grain, well, we had two grains the whole time that we were there. Quinoa, they believe, is some kind of magic food. They believe that it is a superfood, that it is full, chuck full of great minerals and vitamins. It's easy to digest, and they recommended it. Well, they had it, they served it every single morning. We had quinoa with coconut milk, unsweetened coconut milk, and um, a little bit of cinnamon. I use cinnamon oil here. And um, there was a little bit of sweetener in there, wasn't there, Bonnie? Um, you know, I, no, it was, I think it was the coconut milk. Oh, okay, because I have unsweetened coconut milk here. And it didn't taste quite as sweet as what we were having there. So yeah, but quinoa. And then the second grain that we had was brown rice. We had that, I think in the two weeks that we were there, we may have had brown rice twice. Am yeah. I right, Bonnie? That was it. That was yep. it. Yep, yep. They, you don't need all that. But we even had quinoa on our eggplant. They roasted the eggplant um and put the quinoa on top of it and it made a really nice crust you know crunchy um texture to the eggplant so um that was that's my next project i'm going to try christina <laughs> yeah and we actually had stuffed poblamos as well where they stuffed it with quinoa and mushrooms and uh green onion and uh, you know, just chopped up vegetables and then stuffed the poblamo and then um, baked them. Oh my gosh, I love poblamos anyway. So that was great. Now they do use a little bit of cheese. And when I say little bit, I mean a very small amount. Just like a little sprinkle here and a little sprinkle More for there. decoration. Yeah, it's really not even enough to say, oh, cheese. <laughs> no dairy we're not getting any dairy there and um and we did have eggs uh every once in a while we have one or two soft boiled eggs or medium boiled eggs or um scrambled eggs with chives we had once we had kind of a frittata type of egg pie one time or like a quiche without a without a crust uh, with vegetables in it. That's what I made tonight. Oh yeah. I made that, that was... tonight. And I put asparagus and mushrooms and zucchini and, and green onion in it and baked it. Turned out really good. Yeah, so, so we, we got a lot of great food ideas from being there as well. Did they use the Ningxia wolfberries themselves in any of their creations? I know you had Ningxia red while you were down there or appeared that way in pictures. Or well, we only actually... had Ningxia red because we brought our own Ningxia red. Uh, um, they don't provide that. They don't really provide your supplements. They did provide our mineral essence. Uh, we provided our Juva, uh, Juva power. We provided our Omega Jive. Bonnie and Steve had brought their own supplements. The supplement regime changed based on their recommendations, but they don't really provide those things because Ecuador has a very limited Young Living stock. They can't get a lot. I would say 
they probably get maybe 25 products out of 300 wouldn't you say Lonnie yeah somewhere in there there wasn't it wasn't very many they got they get most of the oils but um, they were limited on um, on any of the other stuff that they they could get they now had diffusers that we can't get anymore but which was kind of uh, nice but um, as far as the other products they were really limited yeah they 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 are open for distribution in Ecuador so they're not an NFR state uh, country anymore however customs has really limited what they can bring into their country hmm. so they have a recommended list that if you go you should bring your supplements um, and yeah you should bring your, your supplements that's and, and we br we knew to bring a 30 pack of Ningxia red when we went and so they don't get the Ningxia wolfberry shipped into Ecuador okay interesting yeah it is it is you would think at a clinic they'd have everything they, but they did have a lot of oils and they used a lot of oils on us um you know like uh palo santo and uh, they had melrose and they had ylang ylang <laughs> they had lots of ylang ylang they had uh there were quite a few oils that they had there and uh what one last question and i'll try not to <laughs> commandeer the whole conversation i'm sorry did you have a um, a um, infrared sauna and a raindrop on the same day? Did you ever have both of those on the same day? I'm just curious from a detox standpoint no, if that's a, if that would be a, a lot for a body to handle in one day or. Any thoughts on that? <laughs> she's good. She's looking up her daily, um, her daily, because I didn't get a raindrop. Yeah, so my schedule. Her schedule. Uh, but in the meantime, I'm going to say, uh, yeah, the bigger tubs can hold a six foot six man. Okay. <laughs> yeah, I wanted to answer that question. Uh, there, that tub that all four of us were in, that's plenty, plenty. Big. I was, yeah, I was, I was, when I put that in, it was when you had the individual. Oh yeah, yeah. I don't think he would fit we very did, well in there. Go ahead, Bonnie. Yeah, we did a raindrop in a steam room um, on the same day, and um, but usually I think what happened was is we do one with the IV in, so we hit, did the raindrop because we had the IV in. And then the steam rooms or whatever we did when the IV was out, so that was the afternoon. So you had a bit of a, a break in between. So it wasn't one right after the other. Okay. So, but I, you know, we had we had lots of things going on. I know we did. Um, that was one day, Christina. Didn't you go from the steam room to the sauna to the tub? Yeah. <laughs> one day yeah so so yeah they they'll get you busy okay all right thank you very much yes is, does anyone else have any questions gail just a couple quick ones christina i yes. followed you when i was writing fast enough up through your your personal thing of the two comfort tone and then what did you list after that one pack of alkaline breakfast and bedtime. Okay. One cap of Super B at breakfast. Okay. Sulfurzyme as needed. Okay. Multigreens, two caps, breakfast, lunch, and dinner. Okay. One inner defense before lunch. Ah, okay. Progestin okay. plus as needed. Which was it as needed? Yes, progestins plus as needed. Ah, okay, thank you. That was the other one I missed. Mineral essence, five half droppers, breakfast and lunch. Cardiogize, two caps at lunch. One pack of master formula and one scoop of amino wise. 
Okay. Thank you. You're very welcome. I figured I was going a little fast, so it's no problem. Anybody else have any questions? Thank you so much. Have a wonderful week. Weekend. Yeah, you guys too. Well, I do hope that this kind of gave you some insight. And I want to encourage you, think about doing this, especially um, I'm going to be teaching on uh, Silverbound, which is our new incentive program. And I actually talked to the head of resolutions. Her name is Lynn Bessinger. She is from South Africa. I had her look at my downline and she said with this new in uh, this new bonus package that we're all going to do phenomenally great. And she even called, I don't know if Cookie's still on or not, but she said, who is this Lois Berryman? She can make this $1,500 bonus. And I said, I will let her know. So Cookie, I don't know if you're still on, but um, when corporate calls your name, there must be something to that. Um, there are going to be a lot of people in our organization that you're going to see magic from with this new Silverbound. I'm going to be teaching it. And Cookie says she's ready. Yay, Cookie. Um, I'm going to be teaching it. My goal is to teach something about it every day, whether it be a live video, uh, uh, something recorded that I'll put on Diamond Miners, uh, an additional uh, bonus Zoom that you can jump on and we'll talk about it. We'll talk about how you can incentivize your people to make the money that's out there. Um, I've got a couple of executives that are hair's breadth away from making silver. And if they make it in the month of April, April 1st, this silver bound starts, they will get a $1,500 bonus in addition to their commissions from, from Young Living. Every star that makes star gets a $50 bonus. Every senior star that makes senior star for the first time gets a $150 bonus, a two, $250 bonus, excuse me. Every executive that makes executive for the first time gets a $500 bonus. People, this is huge. They've gotten rid of the rising star bonus and the um, elite. Vani, your name was also called out by corporate. She is so close. Get her to that second leg and she will get this bonus. So I know money is not an issue for you, but you know what? It just gives us impotence to, to try a little harder, to work, you know, to sign up those people that we've been, you know, waiting in the wings, that they've been waiting in the wings or whatever it is. But, um, but yeah, it was exciting to talk to Lynn Bissinger yesterday and, uh, and have her look at my downline. And she said, you are set. This is going to be huge for you and all your people. So I just wanted to end our call with that little tidbit and let you know that I love all of you. And I'm so glad that you're on. And oh, just a, just a side note, Leslie, I am planning a trip to Texas to train uh, around September uh, during the time of Diamond Bound. Diamond Bound. I'm going to spend either a week before Diamond Bound or a week after. So if you want training and I need to travel to you um, and you can get people to a training, I will be there. Just let them know. Start advertising now. We just need to get some dates uh, hard and fast. I've got quite a few people in the Denton area that I want to hit as well. And so I'm going to be sending postcards out. We're going to be doing a campaign. I'm going to be going to Maryland and Delaware this year. I'm going to be going to, um, where else am I going? I'm going to Maryland and Delaware. I'm going to Dallas. I'm going to Texas. There's someplace else I'm going and I can't remember. Oh, I'm going to Chicago. I'm going to Chicago for my Hispanic group as well. So those are all the trips in addition to my uh, Vietnam trip and then um, uh, con convention. So I'm going to be a busy uh, one arm paper hanger, aren't I? <laughs> all right, guys. I love you all. Have a good night. I'm going to shut it down now. See you Tuesday for digestion. And I will see you before that if you catch me on a
silverbound call or training. Bye bye. Hey, Christina. Yes. You get my message about the results of the genetic test. I think I got that before I left, didn't I? Yeah, I come to find out I got a very rare condition. Yes, I read that before I left. Right. Uh, so far, we're waiting for the doctor to go over the lab results and I'm um, to go see a geneticist and everything. Yes, I remember you writing that. Yes, I did read that, April. Thank you for reminding me. Mm -hmm. Only 400 cases known in the U.S. Oh, wow. That's how rare it is. Well, you can think of yourself as very special, right? <laughs> I, I think we all knew that. Yes. <laughs> but she was the my as my doctor, she was like, I think everything is connected, the vitiligo, the defect inside my mouth, and everything else. Well, that's pretty cool. You know, we can talk about this if you want to make an appointment uh, for me. I, I was wondering if I was going to get in touch with you later to see about getting another uh, Zyto reading. Sure. Yeah, we'll and do a Zyto and a foot bath. Okay? Okay. All right. Call me next week. All right. Will do. Okay. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.